Good morning to all of you here today. Greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you once again to Green Castle Church of the Nazarene. And for those that might be watching online, I just simply ask that you type in the chat where you're watching from and how we can best pray for you. Today's message title is called, It's So Not About Us. It's So Not About Us. Turn to your neighbor and say, It's So Not About Us. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm sorry, but I know it's so not about us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, do any of you have anyone in your life that always seems to either want or to be the center of all attention? Huh? I hear chuckles, but I don't hear any amens. Amen. So... I'm assuming that you might know that person. Uh, in grade school, there is this kid, and so for the sake of not using real names, I'm just going to simply call him Bershman. And so we we called this kid because he would always come around, and he was the kid who's like, guys, 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 I got this, this, this guys, guys, you need to, no, you pay attention to me, da, da, da. you know, one of those types of people. Uh, he didn't get, unfortunately, invited to a lot of the basketball games and parties that we have with all of that on the playground. Uh, because it's all about him. You give him the ball, he's always shooting. He doesn't pass. He's trying to go for a slam dunk, but he's only like four foot eleven. I mean, you know. So we all know some people within our lives that always seem to either crave or want or just make everything about themselves. Amen? Okay. We're on the same page. <laughs> now, here's a little bit of science to get some things started here today. There was a scientist whose name was Ptolemy. He was a second century astronomer and his viewpoints dominated all of astronomy until the 16th century. He taught that the Earth, this little blue ball planet that you're sitting and standing on, the Earth was the center of the entire galaxy, of the entire universe. And everything else revolved around the Earth, okay? But there was another guy who came in the 16th century who was a scientist. His name was Copernicus. And he showed that the sun, not the Earth, was the center of the universe and that the Earth revolved around the sun. And so today we know this as the uh, Copernican Revolution, right? Now say that to your neighbor. I learned some science today. I learned some science today in church. Amen. So here's the thing. I believe that as the church of God, amen, I believe that as a people of God, we need to be reminded that the church in this world is not all about Say it with me. The church is not all about us. <laughs> and you can point at yourself like that. I do. Okay? It's not all about us. But it is about someone. And that someone is Jesus Christ this morning. Let's give praise to God once more. Amen. So we're going to turn to our Bibles today. Let's stand. And we're going to be in Romans today, chapter 11, verse 33 through 36. So let's stand and turn to our Bibles and let's see what the Word of God has for us here today. You guys ready for the Word? Amen. Amen. This is what it says. It says, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! Exclamation point. So I'm going to reread that. So I'm going to put some emphasis. Oh, the depths and riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things 
To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for this word today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, show us what your word is trying to say this here today. Father, I, I ask that you use this message to speak to your people. Father, I ask that this message, Lord, be opened up to some minds here today, Lord. I ask that, Lord, that whatever words I preach and think and say, Father, may they be anointed by you here today to get the message across that everything is all about you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated today. So, for those of you who like to read, how many of you like to read, just by the way? Okay, most of you, some of you, hmm? no, nope, not so much. Okay, so this won't apply to you. But there's an author, her name is Joni Erickson Tata, and in her award-winning book, which is called A Step Further, she responds to the struggle that she faced following an accident that left her as a quadriplegic. And you thought your life was bad. In this book, she questioned God's goodness and fairness in the midst of all of her suffering. And she began to see the futility of thinking in that sort of way. In fact, this is one of the quotes from her book. It says, what made me think that even if God explained all of his ways to me, how would I be able to understand them all? It would be like this. And I love this example. Are you ready for this? It would be like pouring a million gallons of truth into a one ounce, <laughs> one ounce brain. I'm going to reread that again. It's like pouring a million gallons of truth into a one ounce brain. <laughs> Why? Even the great Apostle Paul admitted that though never in despair, he was often perplexed. And that comes... 2 Corinthians 4 8. In fact, the whole book of Ecclesiastes, going into the Old Testament, it was written to convince people like me that only God holds the keys to unlocking all of the mysteries of life. And He's not loaning out those keys. If God's mind was small enough for me to understand, He would not be God. Amen? Amen. So what does that mean for us here today? How does this all make sense? Well, here's what I want us to understand today. That today it's not going to be all about me, myself, and I. Your three favorite people. <laughs> but today it's going to be about getting the us out of the focus. It's going to be about taking the I out of me. It's going to be about learning how to understand how we can keep our lives before the Lord and keeping his life at the center of ours. And as we've been talking about with our prayer initiative, and I think that this will go well, it's about learning how to catch a fresh vision of who God is. If you want a fresh vision of who God is in your life, a fresh vision, a fresh touch, a fresh knowing of his glory, and seeing the glory cloud of the Lord in your life and following that glory cloud wherever it goes. How many of you want that in the church today? Amen. Amen. Give him praise. Amen. And so today we start with my first point is this. My first point is that we ascribe him praise. This is how we get to this. In fact, this is how we learn how to die to ourselves and to pick up the cross of our life. We ascribe Him praise. What does that mean? Well, if we look in Romans chapter 11, verse 33, and we look at that first part of that verse where it says, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. If we look at that, we see that in this presentation that Paul is talking about here in Romans, he's laying out the presentation of God's person and what his plan is. In fact, Paul concludes his discussion of theology and he begins to burst forth in a doxology of praise. 
How many of you can do that? That's really quiet. But good theology, and I know this from my worship songwriting class, good theology always makes for good doxology, which makes for great music and songs. Paul recognizes this in this passage, that God, unlike you and me, is unlimited in resources. Unlimited! Okay? God doesn't care about the price of gas at the pump because he doesn't need gas to get him going to where he needs to go. He's everywhere all at once. Give him praise. His wisdom, it's supreme. In fact, when we ponder the greatness of God, we always give him praise because there's no way that I can know all that stuff in my brain. But God laid every single mathematical, philosophical, scientific thought into every detail of creation. Give him praise for that. Amen. When we enter into his presence, we enter into his majesty and into his glory. And when we enter into his presence, we also enter into his holiness. Amen. 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 Give him praise for that. And then when we enter into that, we stand in his love. And we just bask in awe of who God is. Because we understand that we're nothing like him. Oh, we have a lot of things that God created us with some similarities. But we are nothing like God. We are his handiwork. And as his handiwork, Whenever I enter into a church service or to a gathering, people know, well, why are you always so excited? I'm excited because I ascribe praise to the Lord because I know what God had to do to get me into this place here today. And all along the way, through his pervenient grace, through his saving grace and his sanctifying grace, by the power of God, I'm here today. And so if I'm here, I'm going to give him all my worship and I'm going to give him all my praise and I'm not going to hold back. Give him praise. Amen. Amen. And so we ascribe him praise. My second point here today is this. We assert his transcendence. And you're like, man, these are some fancy words today. We assert his transcendence. What does that mean? Well, we look at the next part of verse 33. It says, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. You see, God is beyond our comprehension. How unsearchable in his judgments and his past beyond tracing out. He's uncomprehensible. In fact, in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament in chapter 55, verses 8 through 9, this is what it says. It says, for my thoughts, and this is God speaking, by the way, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, declares who? The Lord. Next verse, he says this, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways my thoughts than your thoughts. You will never be able to outthink God. You will never be able to <laughs> understand all of his ways. You will never be able to comprehend everything that's in the mind of God. And for some of you, you may not like that very much. <laughs> but you know, for me, it gives me pause to think. Because sometimes I let myself run ahead of the Lord and think that what I think is better. <laughs> How many of you sometimes have that problem in your life? You run ahead of the Lord. You don't let him lead and guide. And so you get so far ahead. And then you find yourself sunken in a hole somewhere. And then you're like, oh, Lord, I need your help. <laughs> Well, we have to learn how to assert his transcendence. What does that mean? It means that we see how wondrous God's ways are, and we can be thankful for the glimpse that God is able to give to us. And even though we can't understand, we can learn how to do one thing, and that is learn how to trust God for our lives. We have to understand 
and trust in doing and following what he would ask us to do. And here's something else that we can do. We can learn how to worship him in wonder and awe because God is the transcendent one. How many of you believe that the Lord is with us here right now in this church, in this building? Raise your hand. Give him praise for that. Amen. 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 And so he's here. He's at other churches across in the community, across our nation, across our world. Why? Because he doesn't situate himself in just one place like we can. God, in all of his ways, <laughs> he can be everywhere all at once. That's the God that we serve and worship. Amen? Amen. Amen. My next point is this. We acknowledge his sufficiency. We acknowledge his sufficiency. What does that mean? Well, in verse 34 and 35 in Romans, this is what it says. It says this. It says, for who? It's a question. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? Last time that I checked, God wasn't needed any advice and help from me or anyone else on this planet to do his job. Amen? Amen. It's not like he's going to every prime minister and president saying, all right, listen, I know you guys, you get along on this. We don't get along on this. What are we going to do to move forward? You know, because we got to get the ball rolling and da, 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 da. God doesn't need to have a meeting with, with anybody on how to run and rule this world. Amen? Amen. 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 I give him a big praise for that. And I give him a big praise because you can see the mess that we're in sometimes. And how politically charged just about everything is anymore. You can't chew gum without having some sort of political connotation anymore. But praise God that we serve a ruler and a king who is loving and who is just, who is kind, who is graceful and knows how to rule this place because he knows what you've been up to. He sees you at night. He sees all things because he's everywhere. He's transcendent. So he doesn't need anyone to tell him how to do his job or how to be God. And I am so grateful. Give him praise for that. Amen. Amen. The next point I want to make here today is that we affirm his centrality. We affirm his centrality. Big word, right? I know I used the dictionary this week. For all of you that said your words aren't big enough. So I hope these are big enough for you this week. Next week, you know, we'll see what we got. I'm just kidding. But we affirm his centrality. What does that mean? It means simply this. It means like what the song that we sang about this morning. In order to make life not so much about us, we have to learn how to affirm who is life all about. And life for me is all about serving Jesus Christ. Point blank. And so what does that mean? It means that I affirm that God is at the center of all things within my life. Because if God is not at the center of all things, then something else is. And it's so easy because as we shift through moment by moment, sometimes we can set certain things and a certain priority that don't need the place that God needs to be in. So we have to center our lives around his centrality. What, what does that mean for us here today? It means that as we look at this passage here in Romans, one of my favorite, verse 36, it says this. I don't want us to say this together because I believe there's power in the affirmation of the word as God's people speak the word out loud and speak it over their lives. So can we say this verse together? Okay. All right. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Amen. What does that mean with making God the centrality of all things? Well, it means this very much that number one, it means for of him. What does that mean? It means this, that all things originated from God. Okay, all things originated from God. We know that from Genesis 1:1. We also know that from Gen or, uh, John chapter 1 verse 4, where he 
said in the Word that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God, and all things, again, all things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In fact, I think Jesus is saying, I don't know how else to explain this to you in layman's terms. <laughs> That all things were made. In him was life, and the life was the light of him. God made all things. What else does it mean to make God the center point of your life? It means this to understand that not just from him, but it also says in that verse, of him. Of him. It means that God is the sustainer all things. If he made everything, he's going to sustain all things. In fact, it says that for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authority, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. So God is central in God made everything. He sustains everything. And lastly, to him means that all significance in our life, all glory, all renown, everything that we've got should be given unto God in praise because he's the one who makes all things significant. In fact, Isaiah in chapter 48, verse 9, he said this, 9 through uh, 11, he said, for, for my name's sake, I defer my anger. For the sake of my praise, I restrain it for you, that I may not cut you off. Behold, this is what God is saying. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tried you in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. For how should my name be profaned? My glory, and I love this, I will not give to another. Amen? You see, you serve a God who is everlasting and everlasting. He does not change because there is no one that can take his place. There is no one that can do his job. There is no one who can love in the way that God can love you and can love me. There is no one that can have the same kind of attitude that God can have towards us. A sinner caught in the miry clay. But yet, what did he do? He sent his son Jesus to die for us on the cross and to take us out of the miry clay of sin and to bring us up on the rock that is solid, that is Christ Jesus himself. There is no one that's going to do that for you, but Jesus did that for you on the cross. Amen. And he sustains and holds you through the blood that was shed, through his resurrecting power. Because we don't serve a God who's dead in some tomb. We serve a God who is alive and well with us here this morning. Give him praise. And so because my last point is this. Because we serve a risen Savior who is alive and well. Guess what? In order to make life not about us, we got to aim for his glory. We're aiming for the glory cloud of the Lord. We're going to follow where he wants us to follow. Because it says to him, to God, be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I don't know about you, but living for the things of this world, man, it's so short-sighted. You can have all the money in the world and be the most unhappiest and ungrateful person that's sitting in the room. You can have, you can have the biggest family. You can have the most friends on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and whatever social media chapter that just got made in the last day or so. I, I, they pop up like every day. But you can be the loneliest person that you know. You can have it all. You can be the smartest person that you know and graduated. You can have 20 doctorates in your pocket. <laughs> And yet, still not understand that life and all of its blessings and curses is really not about you. You know what life's about? It's about serving the Lord. 
That's what life is about. There's so many people out there that are so unhappy because they don't know that the secret to life isn't found in anything in this world. Because anything in this world, it's only going to bring you back to where it came from, here. <laughs> so that's your car, your money, everything. And that's why when we aim for his glory and we follow the glory cloud that the Lord wants us to have, because he wants us to follow him and he wants us to have a personal relationship with him. He, he knows you by name, but yet do you call out to him every day? The thing of it is we have to aim for his glory. And I believe that this time that we're going to be dedicating unto prayer, unto the Lord, I think it's going to be powerful for our church. I think it's going to be powerful for us as individuals serving the Lord because it's going to be His glory cloud and filling the room and filling the sanctuary where we're praying and filling this place in such a way to where I don't think we're going to leave the same. Because it's not about us. It's all about Him. Amen? Amen. 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 Today, to help you understand that point, I want you to know that I want you to catch a fresh vision of that glory. And I want it to be transformative. But I believe that God calls us to do all things for His glory and renown. Amen? So today we're going to gather around the Lord's table today. And we're going to celebrate. We're going to take the love feast. <laughs> because it's out of love and grace and mercy that God ordained this holy sacrament that we're going to be giving today. So we're going to respond today by taking communion. So if we can have the stewards come and help be able to serve our, our communion today. Within our communion, you will have the, the bread and you will also have a cup which will be indicative of the blood of Christ. And so I'm going to let them go ahead and pass this around. And while they're passing this out, I would like to read to you today a piece of scripture. Okay? And this scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. For this is what the word of the Lord says. It says, for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus, he took some bread. And in the scripture, says that he gave thanks to God for it. And he broke it and played in pieces. And he said this, he says that this, this which you're holding within your hand, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after the supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Before we go and come together at the Lord's table, I want us to be able to bow our heads today. Okay? And as we gather at his table, I just simply want to say this. You don't have to be a member of the church to take communion. All we ask is that you know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. And as we bow our heads today, if there's in any sort of way something in your life to where you've been making it more about you than you are about him, or you've been telling the Lord, Lord, huh, my time is more important than your time. Huh. Maybe you've been telling the Lord in your heart and mind that Lord, I can't do this and I can't do that because it would just make me uncomfortable. 
I want you to be able to take this moment and to be able just to bow your heads today and to begin to pray. Let's pray. There, my Father, Lord, as we come before you, and Lord, we are at your table together today. Lord, we want to be able to give you praise and adoration, Lord, for understanding that life is not about you. I am so glad that life, or life is not about us, it's all about you. And I'm so glad that life is not about me and anyone else. I'm so glad that it's all about you. And so, Father, we pray that in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you come and have your Holy Spirit speak to us here today. Lord, as we gather around your table with grace, Father, Lord, convict our hearts, Father. If, we're, if we've got sins within our lives, Lord, where we've made ourselves more important, where we've not made the time for you, Father, where we don't pray or we don't even dig into the word, or we, you know, we, we, we just give lip service to you, Father. Lord, may we at this time, Lord, make that right before you. And Lord, we confess those things before you. We confess the times, Lord, where we've not made it right with you. But Lord, we want to make it right here today. And so Lord, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us our iniquities, Father. We give you thanks and praise for what you've done. We pray this in the name of Jesus and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. The Lord himself has ordained this holy sacrament. He commanded his disciples to partake of the bread and of the wine, which are emblems of his broken body and his shed blood. And we believe that this is his table. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Amen. The feast is for his disciples. Let all of those who have true repentance, forsaken their sins, and have believed in Jesus Christ and salvation, may they draw near and take these elements and by faith partake of the life of Jesus Christ to your soul's comfort and joy. And let us remember that it's the memorial of the death and the passion of our Lord. And may we also remember that this is a token of his coming again. Let us not forget that we are at one table with the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 We are also reminded that in the same night our Lord was betrayed and he took the bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. We do this in remembrance of our Lord. And likewise after the supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. May we come before you, Lord, today in true humility and faith, and we partake together of this holy sacrament. So at this time, what I would like you to do is take your communion cup, and I would like you to turn it to the bread side up, which is the little wafer, and I'd like you to be able to peel the top layer, and I want you to hold this little piece of bread in between fingers today, okay? This little wafer is representative of the body that was broken for you from our Lord Jesus Christ. May it preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. I ask that you take and eat this in remembrance that Jesus Christ died for you. Take and eat. At this time, I ask that you turn your communion cup to the other side and gently peel away the layer. Today, I want us to be able to hold up our communion cups unto the Lord and acknowledge that this cup is representative of the blood of Jesus that was also shed on the cross. And I want you to understand today that that his blood was shed for you. May it preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. May you take this cup and drink it today. Let's stand this morning. All hands.
heads bowed and eyes closed through this day. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for inviting us into your table. We, we thank you, God, that you've invited us to have a feast with you here today. Father, we're so grateful because you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross, to shed his blood, have his body broken for our sins to be cleansed so that we can be in right relationship. And the reason why that is so important is because we believe life is all about you. It's not about us. And so, Lord, today as we leave this place, help us to understand what that means for us, Lord. Convict us if there's parts and places in our lives where we allow ourselves to take the reins away from your hand. Father, forgive us if we've made it all about who we are and not anything about who you are. Today, Jesus, I just simply ask that you walk with us, Lord, here today. Lead us with your glory and your renown. We pray this in the name of Jesus. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.